So today we're sitting with Marco Mo. Welcome, Marco. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Um, I just briefly had a chance to meet Marco before coming in here, and I'm super excited to learn more about you and your perspectives of how you, you know, have navigated risk and how you've overcome challenges in your life and look at things from a perspective of neutrality and really moving through life without a lot of attachment to outcome, whether it be positive or negative, and how that served you in being able to not only be successful in your life, but also move forward with things in your life and create and invite new opportunities. So welcome, and I really look forward to hearing from you. Do you notice that no matter what we'll be talking about, Marco, we'll get to this. Maybe I remember last time we even met, we, were, we had a scheduled meeting to talk about something work-related. We never got to the work. No. It was like, hey, how are you? Da da da. Oh, this. Okay, the pandemic. Oh, what's it bringing up out, for you? <laughs> business was out the door, like out the window. Like we didn't even get to that. And as he's leaving that day, I go, oh my god, I needed to talk to you about something. Oh, we'll do it later. <laughs> we'll okay, yeah, we'll do it later. <laughs> so really, that's what I, I found that that happens constantly with us because he'll go and he'll say something. <laughs> and I'll be like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what it is. You don't get a chance to, you can't put on a show for other people you know even closer. Right? I think it's sort of, there's that just right amount of distance. Yeah. You know, I've met you and yeah. you know, you're sort of feeling each other out. But my friends, if I talk to them the way I talk to you, they're like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a different, you know, everybody's got a different level different, yeah. of comfort. You know, they know me as I was in high school hmm. um, and, you know, they still probably see me as that person in high school. Yeah. So I've met you as somebody who's gone through hell. And mm -hmm. so you see a different person, right? And mm. so you just present a different face. Mm -hmm. So who is it that you were in high school? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. This is where we'll start. Yeah. yeah. This is <laughs> Tell me Marco in high school <laughs> or, or should we go before high school? No, no. I, I, uh, <laughs> well, I'll go before high school. I don't want to talk about it. No, no. It's, I, I was... Um, uh, like I said, I, uh, I was the only Asian kid in East York. Yeah. So, you know, small guy, small man syndrome. So I was actually quite a, out there. Like, I was, I, was never, uh, I was never quiet or shy. And so I was very, very good at sort of getting my way type of way. So I, I, I actually had a pretty good, good time growing up. Um, and it allowed me to uh, uh, realize that you have to make your own space mm -hmm. at a very young age. You have to Did you a, always grow up in this area or East York No, I was area? actually in East York. So uh, Victoria Park and St. Clair okay. is where I was growing up, right? That's not true. What is it with St. Clair? I Go know, on. everything. I was Everyone's on St. Clair, Clair too. I lived on this all of St. Clair. Right? Around yeah. Yeah. Victoria Park and St. Clair. <laughs> We're going to create a <laughs> St. Clair alumni. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I, I we just call find all, each other. <laughs> you guys all yeah, find. Yeah, that's what happened. Some of the guy today, young in St. Clair. I don't know. Really? Everybody's something St. Clair. Yeah, no, I was in the poorer parts of St. Clair. Sure. No, it's true. That's what they all say. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely true. Yeah. And um, and so, you know, I think the first act of rebellion was, you know, when I finished grade eight, uh, my parents didn't know I changed schools. I found an address somewhere downtown <laughs> okay. um, and I just used that person's address and just changed schools right out of the district. Went down to Jarvis Collegiate. Oh you just decided gosh. I need to change schools? Because that wouldn't have been your, your school you were in, would have been your school. I would have gone school. to East York Collegiate. Yeah. But that didn't work out. And I, I didn't want to go there. I just didn't want to go. What do you mean you didn't want to go? I just want to try something new. Okay, you just wanted to try and something I went, new. And I went down to, and I, changed, I found an address, I uh, borrowed someone's address and I changed schools and it wasn't a while into it that my parents were, where are you For going? grade nine? You... Grade nine, yeah. I know my parents that, were, where that's are you? pretty so what, It didn't insightful. cross your mind to just say to your parents, I don't want to go to this school. You didn't even bother going through that whole conversation. No, it's all, it's easier <laughs> okay, are you to kidding me? ask just do it. for forgiveness. Forgiveness. <laughs> that's for permission, right? And, and so oh my was God. way into it. Like, we're going every morning. We're going to Jarvis. Why Jarvis? Yeah. They had no idea. So that's what happened. So why Jarvis? Well... The, ostensibly, t there's zero girls there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> was yours an all boys school? Or no, but you know, like Asian kids, Asian girls. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then you yeah. had the Jarvis, okay. Harvard, and Riverdale communities. Community, there. that's yeah. the word. Yeah. And that's okay. it. That was the impetus. Okay. Yeah. Work uh, out. That's a good motivator. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, so I see your reasoning. I see your logic. That's all I had. And, and it was, it, it, it doesn't have to be complicated, right? Yeah. Like it's it's not for the academics. It. Yeah. <laughs> You're not thinking about that in grade nine. No. Oh, no, no. Marco. Right. I, I just like but it more and more as I learn more. But it's funny see this, that we're so protective of our kids now that we, oh my God, and God forbid, right? I know. But like what if your kid did that to you? Yeah. Right? And he's like, are you kidding Oh, me? I'd be mortified. Be mortified, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen nowadays. 
So you can't, your parents don't know you're going to the disaster school until one day? Yeah, until one day, you know, why do you leave so early to go to a school that's close? I'm like, dude, that's an hour away, man. Oh, really? Oh, it slips and then out. that's all comes out. And then, and then found out. And yeah, well, it was too late now. It's already two months yeah. into it, right? So I didn't care. <laughs> two months into it before they found out that I changed schools. Okay. That's so funny. It is what it is, right? <laughs> but, um, but I've always been that way, right? So I think... Um, so you made a new set of friends there then, yeah. obviously. And these yeah. are the same friends I still have now, 30 years mm. later. Okay. Right? Mm. So it worked out. Yeah. That's good. So you said you have to, you, you learned at an early age that you have to make a space for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wh where did you learn this? When, I don't know. Just decided. What do you I mean? To, um, growing up, I was very shy. Okay. Uh, as a, you know, again, you're, you're the only Asian kid in, in, sure. in, 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 in the community. Yeah. And, you know, you hear words and mm -hmm. then you feel bad about words. Mm -hmm. and then you realize, um, you know, if you. So you felt bad. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, okay. if you, but you realize that if, um, if, if you take away the, the, the weight of the words, Right. Um, you don't hurt so much. Mm -hmm. and then, but you realize you also need allies, right? Mm -hmm. And so you, you just learn to leverage uh, others who may feel the same. Mm -hmm. and, and you're this again. is the word of the day, the leverage. Word of the day. Everyone's what using is, it. Right? It is. What, what is that saying? You know, you give me a lever long enough, I can move the earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whoever yes. said that. Yes. Some internet guy. Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was Isaac Newton, but okay. It's well, in there somewhere. It's true, though. Yeah. Right? Like, I Isaac think, Newton I think the biggest problem is that if you... You try to muscle through yourself, you, you just won't work, right? Yeah. You so can yeah. do that to up to a point, but yeah. then you, you got to hold someone's hand or reach out Now I'm going to go Google who said that, but yeah. okay. Yeah. We'll get to that later. Yeah. So, um, so carry on, you were saying. Yeah, so I think that there, there, a lot of it had to do with, you know, uh, folks tend to pick on the quiet and the meek. Mm -hmm. So you, you can see so that I can't and be recognize quiet. that and I probably shouldn't be quiet and meek. Really, mm. that's all it is, right? And, and you know, it's so you you remember thinking that that, that oh, was a yeah, thought process. Oh yeah, for sure. When for how old sure. were you when you thought that for that you? Remember? I would say by by the time I was you know nine or wow, 10, yeah. You can see it though. You yeah. can observe it. You can observe it. it's you know it's the idea that um, uh, people go after easy targets. Mm -hmm. So don't be an easy target. Mm. You know you know whatever uh, the 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 perceived shortcomings are mm -hmm. the other kids will see they'll find a way yeah right and so you know then you start not letting that bother bother you and then you also start surrounding yourself with numbers and i became quite good at rallying folks who otherwise would have felt left out mm -hmm. to now all of a sudden you have numbers because you great. have a, you have a commonality yeah, yeah right and and again you you just try to make sure that uh the i think that's at a very young age I, I realize what's within your control and what's with not in your control. Mm -hmm. That's honestly the biggest differentiator in my entire life. Yeah, you know what you started doing from even that point? Because um, I'm thinking I had the same feeling. <laughs> and yeah, it hurt and yeah, I didn't like it. But I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't get to the point of calculating going. I have to create space. I have, or, to, yeah. create, I have to create my space and I have to rally people. And that requires me to be this persona. You put on a show. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's right. You, you I didn't know. I didn't know to put all this together. So to figure all this out, yeah. you had to sit there, conceive a plan, and then go and execute it. And you had to look at. You didn't even necessarily even have the skills to do it. No, so but then here, what did you do? So right? here's the dark side of that in the <laughs> story: mm -hmm. is that even at a young age, and it sounds stupid, I bring it up, and I am hurt, and I am. I feel mortified when I think about it. Is that you, then you get to the point where it flips the other way. What do you mean? The, the oppressed becomes the oppressor. You know, all of a sudden you realize you can generate this space. You can generate this following. Mm. You suddenly become the mean one. Did you feel like that's what you no, were doing? No, I, I did that. And that was terrible. And well, I, you felt like I, and while I, you were doing it, though. Yeah. So, you know, you, you sort of start off as I'm going to do this for, for uh, self, self defensive yeah. mechanisms. Sure. Yeah. But then you realize so at a very I. young age that, hang on a second. You know, now I can just turn it back the other way. And it wasn't good. I was terrible. Um, what do you mean? Uh, I'm not going to go there. But, okay. uh, but <laughs> I, 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 it, it was terrible it enough. It incriminating, right? It was terrible enough that people reached out to me on Facebook and whatnot 30 years later yeah. wow. to remind me how much I've hurt them. Mm. And um, so I've been through that. Yeah. And so I, I, I openly admit that to my son. I said, don't, don't be that guy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you, and you don't realize how much you hurt folks in the moment. Right. Uh, and then here's the thing. And then you see your son, my own son, getting hurt. Mm. The holy smokes. That's, and you, you understand oh, yeah. both perspectives of that. Of that it, it shouldn't have yeah. taken me this long. Yeah. Uh, and certainly by the time, I would say I didn't grow up until he was born. 
Yeah. He was 30, right? He was still a kid up to that time. You just do what you want to say and, and, and push your way through. But yeah, so it does, it's, it's a weird thing. And, and it's one of those truisms where um, you can't give somebody a little bit of taste of power. It's just, they just keep on running with it. And, and so you, you, that's, that happened, you know, at, at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, and I was mean. I wasn't nice. Um, and that also gave you space. Right then, people would decide that, yeah, I'd rather be on his good side than his bad side. Mm -hmm. um, and you realize that, holy smokes, there's an enormous amount of there's pain under all of that, right? It's there's, all defense yeah, mechanism, right? Yeah, right, hundred percent. That you, yeah. you're so worried about getting beat up again, or you're so worried about getting you know things thrown in your face mm -hmm. that you then create. It's you know you get the whole Joe Pesci thing going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I true, that. but it's true. I have a whole visualization of that. It is. Right it's true. But it, I know. Is that yeah. From like Goodfellas. You're yeah. Talking yeah. About yeah. Like all of them. He's always the same character. He's always the same character. It's like Steven Seagal. It's the same character every time. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's just that's a different plot. Show Pesci thing. That's crazy. Mm. It's true. Mm. It, it is. And so yeah, it's it's a neat thing to have seen and then look back and reflect on. Holy smokes! I actually did that. Yeah. I was that guy. Weird. And then to have that conversation with your son too in such a moment that just brings a different layer to it when you see your yeah. son going through this, right? Yeah. Even like, before though, you know, yeah. so, you know, one of the things I learned by not being very nice is that um, you, you you don't you don't even see the pain of it until it's on your kid. And you're like, holy smokes, that's what's happening. Yeah. And then then you tell him, and then you, you, you obviously you come clean, and you tell him, you know, you weren't great, but um, and again, remind yourself that remind him. Uh, don't ever make anybody else feel this way. Yeah, mm. and I was just speaking with some people about that that issue recently, and um, we were talking about connection and families. And I think what you're doing there is really, really powerful for your son on so many levels. Because one of the things I find, um, I know for myself as a parent and then other parents I speak to, is we tend to put up this picture of that we have all the answers or things okay and everything's perfect but or we hide certain things from them about ourselves certain mm -hmm. truths but when I think there's so much um, there's so much wealth and knowledge there for your son because with that humility that you brought to that he's now seeing okay like you're not one dimensional you're not just dad mm -hmm. it'd be like oh he's had experiences he's had things and so when kids hear these things um, it's so important because it gets to see the humanity in all of our experiences. Yeah, so yeah. then it opens up that dialogue a lot more. So by you being that vulnerable with your son, you just really opened up so much more for him to come to you as well without necessarily being aware of that. You know, well. one of the things I would say to him is I'm just making this shit up as I go along. I openly say I'm making yeah. this up as I go along. I say they don't come with a manual. Yeah. You guys did I'm not come with a manual. manual. And then I yeah. tell him, look, this is the <laughs> first time I've been to that. Yeah. So I probably messed up a whole bunch of ways I didn't even know yet. Yep. And it'll, you'll tell me at some point. Hundred <laughs> percent. But but I tell him that because it's actually true. You know, you, you it is you, true. You do your best. Mm -hmm. You think you're doing the right thing, but it's sometimes not the right no. thing. And you know, he's working through. And you and it's gonna happen. Like you said, your son's fifteen, right? I said my son's nineteen. I'm like, hmm. I, I made so many mistakes. If I yeah. had you now, it'd be totally different. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. Yeah. But it's yeah. also it's also all of that like our parents went through the same thing as mm -hmm. well, you know. Yeah, yeah. They were parents for the first time at some point, yeah. and uh, they did their best, and you you know you did as you thought you were doing your best as well. Yeah, well, and that's what counts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for you know, like I said, you know, you know, I think we had my same backstory. You know, immigrant parents in a new country. Yeah. So there has to. Oh, be you're you're first generation Canadian. Or? I am first generation. I was born in Hong Kong. Oh, okay. But okay. I, I so your fun. Be, your son is first generation. He's first Canadian. generation. Yeah. I was born in '75. Came in '76. So I was about you know okay. six months old. Yeah, you're when I born came. here. Yeah. Well, yeah. not born here, but from yeah, here. Yeah. Much, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I only, I only see this as home. Yeah. So you know, you know, they were younger than me certainly now when when they were, and you know I can't imagine the struggles. Right. You just can't even imagine the no. struggles, right? You know, my mom was doing two bucks an hour at, as a waitress, you know, back then. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as, as somebody, no, actually, she, she was actually, you know, quite proficient with English and language. They both were back then, so we were yeah. fortunate. Um, but um, it was still hard, you know. Yeah. It's, it was still hard. So well, they were experiencing the same, probably, oppression that you were facing as a child, as adults in the community, yeah, too, I right? Think, like, I think it, it might have been uh, <coughs> more open. And then it gets less and less. Yeah. Now, then, then a lot of that, you know. Gets covert. It's, it's now it's more it's subtle. Different. Yeah. Right? Now it's more subtle. Yeah. Right? But, uh, it looks shinier now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but the cool thing about this, and I told Muhammad over, and I was like, 
so at, at the age of, well, I'm 46 now, right? So at the age of 45, I found out that I was adopted. So we went through all of oh this. Oh my goodness. And they didn't have to. <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't have to. They, didn't, they, yeah. they could just, they could just <laughs> off you go. Yeah. But, 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 in that, but you know what? Like, I found out. You just found, like, that's recent. Wow. Like a year ago. Like yeah. My mom and the dad who, who've been divorced for 20 years to show up and they're like, yeah, I'm like, why are you together, man? And, and they showed up and they said, yeah, here's, you're adopted. Here's the papers. I'm and like, so what prompted that? COVID. They, they thought that they were going to die. Mm. They, they uh, thought that, you know, this might be a good time to tell the chance. guy. Yeah, because my mom lived with that her whole life. And so she said, I want to make sure he has enough time to, if he wants to find his birth parents. And I said, no, nah, I'm careless. You know, don't have any interest, right? And so, yeah. so yeah, so for me, I felt nothing but gratitude. I, I was not sad. Well, no, I was just gratitude, just happy. Because yeah. they're still your parents. Yeah. Oh, for sure, yeah. right? And, um, but but the, the point was, they've been through hell with me. Mm. I was a terrible kid. I ran away and all sorts of stuff that kids do and didn't have to. I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't run away. So yeah. not all kids do. Okay, yeah. You had to have some guts to do that also, right? Like, yeah, you yeah had, I did you, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, I ran away too. <laughs> yeah, come on, you did? I, I wanted to at some point, but, in, but I, tell, I me about a kid, <laughs> tell me about a kid I who didn't cold. want to at some point in yeah. time. It's almost like a natural, you want to leave the nest, but it comes out yeah. in different ways, yeah. right? So, but you did. I, but the good thing, all of that in, the, uh. in reflection was, like I said, everybody knew. How old were you, by the way? I don't know, I forgot this? a okay. couple of times. And everybody, everybody <laughs> knew, but the thing is, everybody knew that I was adopted. Like and your whole family? Everybody knew. No one ever breathed a bit of it to me. So that's awesome. So that's, that's gratitude. Yeah. Um, so I am now 46. I'm thinking, holy smoke. So the good thing was I was a jerk not thinking they were adopted. I was just actually a jerk. It was fantastic. Like, it would actually be worse if I knew I was adopted and acted like a jerk. Mm -hmm. But I was sincerely a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> it was authentic. <laughs> I was at least genuine. At least I was genuine. I thought you were my parents, yeah. but um, but they were, and it was awesome. But and you you weren't, I would say, like a jerk. You were you you had trained yourself to create the space. Yeah. So, so the it jerk. A, it was your mask. That you say that you are, is the space. It's it's like I interchange those two words. They're yeah. synonymous. Yeah. You're being a jerk is your space that you created yeah. yourself for yourself to be safe. Yeah. Hundred. Yeah. I can't imagine how many people must do that. It's yeah, very, so people it's can't a very, get close to it's you, very right? natural actually to do. Yeah. yeah. I do it nowadays. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm like, I'd rather be seen as this than be seen as, a, you know, weak. And then, you know, pe the whole mistaking kindness for weakness, whatever it's called. Yeah. And then because when they think you're weak, then, you know, like you got to deal with all this other stuff. So why go through that? Yeah. Why not just put up the jerk front and... Uh, that yeah. gets us through. Well, I would say now I, I'm not less. Very like, common. Yeah, I'm not less like that now. Mm. I just do the. Uh, see, like I mm. am so quick at compartmentalizing, mm. and mm -hmm. I just uh, put it in the box, put that box over there, and I'm and I can never. I don't have to return to it at all. Like it's mm -hmm. amazing. It's um, we talked about this last time, right? <laughs> I'm I don't have what's called a sunk cost fallacy. I don't think that oh I put all this into this thing. I a, gotta, a sun a sunk sun cost, cost a sunk cost fallacy. fallacy. People think that, hey, I put all this time into my career. Yeah. All this time in this relationship. I got to just see it through. Nah, I'm gone. <laughs> it's awesome. No, it is an amazing. Actually, I, I know. I, I'm very much like that. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's, you know, Which, I think... But I have to, when, once I get to that level, sometimes it takes me longer to get to that. But once I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. good. My threshold's yeah. low. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I've been higher. Really I'm working low. on my threshold. That's, what yeah. I, that's why I want to talk to you about this. Yeah. That's what yeah. I want to get really like. It helps with the trading. It's, oh, I, you're a trader? I, I see it. I, or, well, I, now. I, I supplement my income with in our business with our trading accounts, right? Oh, so I, okay. I do a lot of that too in the last couple of years, or 10 years. So, yeah. It does, because then you're not, yeah. 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 Well, it's all about multiple streams, right? You can't just put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and that's true. So, you, you, it's, everything is about risk management. Yeah. Right? You know, so you have your downside and your upside risk. And what's your, and, and I sort of trans, translate all of that to just living. You know, mm -hmm. what's your downside? What's your upside? And, and it's not like living like a spreadsheet, but you know, you know, and you can working. feel it. It's an intuitive yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I mean, we're hopping on, on, on different timelines. And yeah. I want to kind of go back to this space that you said you got to create for yourself, which then you decide is going to be what ultimately turns out to be the oppressor. Mm -hmm. I think there's insight there. Um, I think there's insight for a lot of people to understand that that is one reflex to, you know, survival. Mm -hmm. that a lot of people do um, and when when they do that it's, it's interesting because I could I could have run into you 
Actually, I was just in North York on the border of East York and North York. <laughs> Who knows? I might have even run into you. Like, you know, I was, I was trying to decide Lee Cock, Lee Side, oh, yeah. you know, the same, the but then schools. we moved to yeah. Markham. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, so, so we were very close and around the same kind of timeline. Um, but when, when I think about it, if I ran into somebody who I would think to be an oppressor, I wouldn't think that this person or who I would um, perceive as, a, as an oppressor, that this person is just creating space. this space themselves to survive most mm -hmm. bullies are small they, they, they really are inside i never of, thought this yeah. way i was mm -hmm. like wow look at how strong they are and oh my god and you know you better I, tell the lie <laughs> yeah. right until later uh, when I, I discovered who i was and all that but in that in that time of being the oppressor what i wonder then is um because you said you know uh i made mistakes or i did bad things whatever but the question is is that when, when a person's going through that, call it the oppressor, right? Call it the space that you're in. Mm. What I'm curious to understand is that at some point in time, you say to yourself, right? And you're, you, like you said, you have a low threshold. So you're like, no, cut this, I'm out. So on being, that, on being in that space of who you, of that persona, at what point in time did you start saying, because you're not an oppressor, not how I know you, um, at what point in time did you start saying to yourself, this is not the space for me? Hmm. Well, I think you, you don't, sometimes you don't grow up until you're, you have to grow up. Sure. Yeah. And, then, and then you say to yourself, well, I, I can't be this person um, around my son. I just can't. Right? I'm mm -hmm. not that person, okay. right? You know, I, I was relatively effective working. Um, I was very fortunate to, to, you know, to be in management positions very early in my career. Right. Um, for a reason, you know, yeah. you know, I, I, I was hired to, you know, sometimes be the, be the hatchet man or whatever it is. Uh, and I was young. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I had this idea that you just wall it off and say, hey, you know what? I was hired to do this job. And you sort of play into that thing. Right. But I, I think what Are I you do. Sorry, what do you mean? So, you know, you sort of have a personality and you, 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 personalities continue because they're allowed to continue. Okay. Jerks exist because uh, what you permit, you promote. What people around you permit you to do, they're saying, yeah, good, I'm okay with it. And so my lesson to hmm. folks who, who feel like they have horrible people in their lives is sometimes you let go on far too long. Hmm. That's why they keep on being emboldened. Um, so the cutting off thing hmm. is exactly the opposite. What would I do if somebody was like me? I cut them off. That's it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, I don't need a second chance. I don't need a second time to be hurt. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you do, right? So, you know. So that, you made a profession out of that skill almost. It's, that it, you I live with that mantra. You, yeah. you, you, you promote what you permit. Mm -hmm. you, you, it, it, whether, whether it's with kids, whether it's with coworkers, whether it's with friends. If, if you promote, if you permit behaviors you don't like, you are implicitly saying, do it again. Do There's it again. a saying that, you know, that says, uh, uh, you take what you get. So there's others. There's another one that says actually you get what you take, yeah, 100%. <laughs> which is what you're, yeah. you know, you get what you, so if you take it, you'll keep on getting it. Yeah. And um, so as this kind of with that self responsibility, right? Like you're well, people take yeah. it, I think, because they think that there's other options. Right. Oh, this is the all, that's all I got. Uh -huh. That's not true, man. There's a whole <laughs> world of options, mm -hmm. and and that's where I learned that there's a whole. But world how of do options. you know those options are going to be better? Huh? They or, generally are. If it's crap right now. Yeah, like you gotta take a gamble. Yeah. <laughs> like it's right yeah. Now, yeah. What do you worse? guys lose? Yeah, seriously, like you know, and and, and it's not the whole idea of. Um, but this is the crap that I know. Yes, yeah. and that's a lot of people, right? Yeah. And I say this to my son all the time. You know, just just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's good. Mm. Yeah. Right, and that and, was a theme today. We were talking about yeah. that, that finding the comfort in things that are familiar but not good for us. Yeah, yeah. a lot of times, right? And, and, yeah, we all do and, that. And you know, if, if but you didn't do that. What do you mean? You because you wouldn't stick around. Yeah, I don't. So I'm yeah. good because yeah. I, I, I. That's what I've I know. So if you play on both about your approach, if you if sort of if you've been one person and yeah. you realize that's not the person you want in your life, then right. you can spot it a mile away. Yeah, I don't want this. I'm out. But so many you can people see it are really not even. I can see me, mm. the worst parts of me when I was younger, in folks. No, no, that's it. I don't have to. Don't have to make a big deal out of it. No, mm -hmm. but you just yeah. You just but, but I am pretty it good at giving closure. I'm not one of those guys who's disappearing, ghost anybody. Right, right, yeah. right. So yeah, right. here's the reasons we're not talking. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah. There's no yelling, screaming. None. But there like, doesn't have to be, right? There's no need for that. Right? No. And, and it's no. very, yeah, it's not going to work, man. This is the reasons. Yeah. I life. wish you the best. Yeah. Because yeah. usually what happens in that... Send an email. 
<laughs> but in that situation, there's like this, there's, there's this persuasion to, to keep you in that role because for whatever reason, that ecosystem thrives because you play that role. Yeah. So the ecosystem moves to keep you in that role, don't you think? I think so. Yeah. I, I, and you can feel it in that in right. some sense. It's some weird There's persuasion, the even threat maybe. Like no, I very rarely threat anybody. But no, um, no, I'm talking the other way. Like if you go, there's a threat to you, right? Like, yeah, I you would better say, stay or Yeah, else. but that's a form of manipulation and you can spot that a mile away. Okay. You know, and and you know, oftentimes you see people who are very anxious mm. uh, about their their spot. Those are the things that will come out. You know, if you do this, I will do this. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And fear. I, I don't stay for that. Mm -hmm. I've, dude, that's not going to keep me. Right. Um, so it's it's pretty good. Like it's. It's it, not you, motivating, right? Huh? It's not motivating either. No, but I think the the biggest power is just be able to walk away. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, that's all recognizing what you can't change. That's one hundred percent right. Right. Yeah, that's you don't one of have your lines on that on that piece of paper. You can't, you can't change what other people think. Yeah. But you can change how you respond, right? Mm -hmm. And, and um, so, in most cases, I don't even respond. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> because sometimes it, when you see that, um, when you see something in someone else responding, sometimes we'll just escalate it because it's not always heard as yeah. well, right? Yeah. So, it's kind of knowing your audience with that too, and yeah. where people are at to receive what you have to say. So, yeah. no, I've always wondered why, you know, looking back, why did they put up with this crap? Like, why did they put up with me for so long? Mm -hmm. So, there's a question. Why do you think? It's, again, it comes down to they don't value themselves enough. They, they think Who, when we say they, are we talking about in high school, like the kids that yeah, we even, bully? Or you just know, like, folks, if I, was, if I wasn't particularly kind and uh, or I was, you know, if I took up a lot of, a lot of air in the room, um, <laughs> I'm like, why, why did you let me do that? Yeah. Air in the room. Like, why didn't you just punch me in the face and tell me to stop? Yeah, why didn't they? I don't know. Okay. I, I think a lot of that comes with, I think, I think as I was saying before, uh, call it bullying, call it whatever, they find their mark. Yeah. You, you know, it, it's, a, it's a relationship that people mm. allow themselves to remain in. Um, and it's not physical. Mm. It's, you know, it's a, it's a lot of... Well, sometimes connection, even if it's bad for us, is still... Sure. Yeah, yeah, you just take up room in your head. Yeah. Right? And then you, you just literally free room and board. Um, <laughs> that's what it is, right? So it's a weird thing that we're talking about, but, you know, it is what it is. But we've all gone through it, though. That's the thing. Or we've seen it um, from one perspective or another. So I would say, good. you know, the only advice I would give to anybody, kids, if I was talking to my kid, is recognize behaviors. And, um, you know, if people show you who they are, then that's who they are. Believe who they are. Yeah. And but what if the they're going thing? through that thing? Could be. Then? then? Then come back when you're better. Mm. <laughs> like, seriously, uh, you don't need to take the right. abuse, yeah. man. Like, like right. you know, it's one thing to say, this guy's hurting I'm going to go embrace him and fix and help and, and be there. Right. But if you're taking abuse while he's yeah. going through stuff, mm. come on, man. Like, no one needs to put Yeah, that. and that kind of comes to the, you know, we always have the capacity to really see the good in people. Yeah. Right? So even when they're treating us badly, we can still see the good in them. Yeah. And so, and when you're not being treated well in whatever dynamic of a relationship, it's, you, you hold on to that goodness you see, hoping the badness will stop and they'll change, but sometimes that might never change for a person because that you, they can only do that. You can't do that. And that goodness, you, sometimes you make up. You may, Yeah, to soothe yourself. Yes. Or they might never reach their potential. Yeah. Right? They might have all that goodness all the time and that potential, but to actually actualize it but is a whole the, different your, thing. The idea of the sunk cost. I've yeah. put so much into this. I can fix this. I yeah. Can, I mean, no. You man. have to accept it. <laughs> yeah, where See, it's See, I don't work that way myself. <laughs> I, I can tell you I don't. But I'm, I'm understanding it. And, uh, and I look at it, wh while you're saying this, I'm thinking about how many people didn't give up on me when they could have given up on me. And according to this idea, but it's not they should up. have given up on me. No, if you were abusive, Money. that's one thing. Yeah. I mean, no, but are, we're talking about help. sunk cost. They sunk cost into me. Mm. I see what you're saying. So parents you just, that, and, that same, and family. Yeah, well, absolutely. For starters. For starters. For right. starters. Uh, yeah, they sink a lot of cost into us. And according to this idea, they should walk away. But no, they shouldn't. That has, I haven't applied that to my own family at all. Exactly. However, but, I, but you're did right. they apply it to you. Correct, right? And um, I mean, the family that took you and, and yeah, raised yeah, you, sure. and that, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. They never did it. And you said it yourself, you, you, according to you, you're not a good, a, a good kid to them, whatever, whatever. Like you were, we, I was probably worse. But the point is, is that they... Stuck with you. Yes. 
And um, anyway, so that's for them. But I'm thinking for me too. Uh, yeah, I'm glad somebody stuck around. Um, my wife, for starters. Yeah. <laughs> I always say just she must be like borderline insane because she stuck around this long with yeah. me, and she has been the most impactful person on who I am. Um, and it's because of her patience with me. And I'm not talking a day or I'm talking decades well, lifetime, long yeah. of <laughs> commitment to me that she could have bailed like so many people have bailed on me, but she, she stuck with me. But I think and bailing, she made a huge difference. I think bailing versus... And I not, wasn't even worth it. I know, but I'm talking about, if you're talking about bailing versus taking uh, abuse or, or, or being in a situation where... And now, if you're... If, if you were abusive, for uh, instance, right, right, I don't right. know, and right. I, I don't know yeah. why yeah. somebody would stick around. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, if I was ever abusive to my wife, I yeah. would, I, she should not stick around. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, um, right. But I would say that there's, there's one, you know, there, when I'm talking about sunk costs, I'm talking about, right. if, am I putting in, into, you know, an, op, you know, a relationship, opportunity, uh, investment, or whatever it is, um, there has to be some sort of downside management. There has to be. Mm -hmm. you, you don't just like. Not sure. everything's roses. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And and, and you know, yeah. like the the idea mm -hmm. is, uh, you have to accept that there are options. I think if you live, I think folks who hang on for dear life for whatever that reason is, don't see options, and and they don't live in abundance in some sense. Because mm -hmm. I know that uh, at this moment, if things didn't go well, whether it's investment, business, whatever. I feel there are others. Mm -hmm. I really do feel that. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I've lost this bit of business. I will find it there. Mm -hmm. I made a bad trade. you lost trade. it for a reason? You learned yeah. from it? I yeah, I made a bad trade here, mm -hmm. uh, and I will do a good trade there. So I always feel like there's an abundance uh, in, in that mindset, and I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've seen it mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like the Tetris effect, right? If you see obstacles, if you expect obstacles, you only see obstacles. If yeah. you expect the next thing around the corner, you will see the next thing around the corner. It will show up. Yeah. And so when I say in, the, in terms of, you know, sunk cost fallacy, I, I do sincerely mean that we often throw a lot of times in our careers or business, um, you know, friendships that may or may not be reciprocal. Mm. Yeah. Uh, even, oh, even family relationships that aren't, po that aren't positive both mm -hmm. ways. But it's familiar. You, you gotta cut. Um, you but know, they're not yet abusive. Huh? They're not abusive necessarily. But they're not positive either. Mm. There's, there's yeah. got to. I mean, I'm not saying that everybody's everything's in a spreadsheet. Right, right. But come right. on. At the end of the day, there's, there's. But if you're, if something at least is, do if, no harm. Yeah, if it's taking more from yeah. you than than giving back to you, or depleting you more than nurturing or giving back to you, then yeah. that's where you got to kind of. And not everybody's my bit. son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, I mean, that's you know, you, you know, yeah. as we all know, as mm. parents, once when it comes to your kids, you live a different person. You're a different sure. person. You're, you're, you're yeah. a papa bear. You go right in there and you fix, or you try to fix things about yeah. right. making things worse, right? Right. There's a lot of love there. There's a lot of in, investment. I told invested. you. I, did I tell you I kidnapped my wife? <laughs> okay. I never told you? Do we still want to record this part? Yeah, we can. Okay, all right. Let's, 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 let's go. You kidnapped your wife? So, okay. <laughs> I, so, I knew this, but I didn't know no, if I could. No, so what happened okay, let's go. was, <laughs> bottom place. line is, you know, without going How he kidnapped his wife. Going, Min was putting that into the subtitles <laughs> yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> without going into too much detail. Okay. Because, you know. Because um, we know, yeah. Because, um, so bottom line is, it, was, it wasn't a good situation at home for her. Okay. And, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and so... I said, okay, that's a little bit different. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a good right, situation. Right, right. You, you, you rescued started, her, not like, kidnapped her. <laughs> with, without going into detail. Yeah. But it wasn't a good situation. Okay. And we had met in university. Um, and at some point, you know, it got to a head. And I said, look, <clears throat> I didn't even give her the choice in some sense. This is my favorite part. I borrowed my friend's cube van. So uh, she's living at home with her, her like, family parents. of work. Yeah, yeah okay. all that, like everything. Family, yeah. So it was a weekend. Her, her parents went down to Detroit for Thanksgiving or whatever it is. Um, I drove up in our cube van that I borrowed with a whole bunch of pl plastic bags and, and black paper bags, or black paper, uh, garbage Boxes bags, garbage, garbage bags. Yeah. I said, look, you have 30 seconds, you gotta make a choice. And she made the choice. Literally, okay. But what, what choice between what and go? Like, stay home or, or come with me. Okay. Um, you know, I was already working, I had my own place. And you were dating and everything? Yeah, and... I was like 23, I was full of piss and vinegar. And, and yeah. I said, look, you're gonna have to choose. Like, uh, this is terrible. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, she's in med school at that time, and, and the stuff Stressful. was killing her. All the stuff was going on, and I said, "Look, I can save you from this, or you can choose to stay." So we, uh, we just, yeah, okay, 
Okay. Was the choice as in like you get with me, come with me now, or I leave you here? No, okay. no, that's never it? a choice. Okay. That that be minute. So I just wanted yeah. to like yes. I wanted to understand. Correct. No, no, I no. Wanted everybody. That, to I'm understand. giving you an opportunity to leave. Here yes, that wasn't okay. a threat. Yeah. That that yeah. would be horrible. But it was because there was no reason, nothing from all of us. Yeah, no. it's, just, it's just a situation. You just didn't want to see her hurt anymore. Yes, there. and it sucked. Yeah, um, and, it, and it sucked right to the end. Um, and bottom line is, she grabbed her stuff, packed it into the thing, and we drove off. And that was it. And that was 27 years ago. Wow. Like, well, no, 27 years, maybe 24 years ago. Mm. Yeah. You know, like, everything's good. And I had this responsibility of not ruining her life now. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> now, now this, this, this. Did you think about that part? Yeah. yeah no, I, I, I think that part. I just, yeah. had, I just had the van for the day. So, so she, exactly. She, she, she is in med school. So now I have to make sure that things won't screw up. Right. Right. And she's still got a lot yeah, of she's studying got a, to do. All that stuff to happen. And um, yeah, and she's so, a surgeon today. Yeah, That's so I, so I worked. I worked. I, I was a trader back then, and I worked, and we just worked. You know, I just worked to make sure Figured we paid, paid the bills, and you know, as as physicians, they don't start building until like a decade later. No, <laughs> and no. so so that was all part of and it. They have a lot of debt when they yeah. start building. So yeah. we we uh, you know, I was a trader, and I lost a lot of money at the time because I was young and stupid. Um, so much so that we couldn't get married. We couldn't afford to get married. Right. I, I, so we eloped. Nice. So we went to Italy. Uh, her and I went to Florence, and we got married. Where did you get the money to go to Florence? We, no, it was, we didn't have the money. Get it. So it was two credit cards, so we had to get one of those, like, you know, MBNA, here, take this card type of thing. Yeah. Uh, and then, so we, we just, Florence. So it was <laughs> me, my, so, me and her and her brother. Quite and the planner. Friend, <laughs> and I'm my best friend. And, and it, was, it was terrifying because it was just the beginning days of the internet. So we found a wedding planner on the internet. Oh, <laughs> and, and, and she was like, all right, it's going to be 10 grand. That's pretty much all we have. Uh, okay. Let's try it. Turned out to be great. The guy's name was Ben Singleton. Awesome. <laughs> Have you ever needed to get married in Florence? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got go. married in Florence. The, the mayor of Florence married us. Wow. And it was cool. It was just cool. It was just six of us. We couldn't afford a wedding dinner, yeah. so we had a wedding lunch. That's amazing. Yeah. So 20 some odd years later, well, not quite 20, we've been married 19 years. 2023 would be our, uh, That's amazing. our 20th anniversary. Yeah. So it all worked out. But I think that has to do with... That um, moment. Back to that, right? Yeah. You know, it had to, it had to do with, um, you know, you're taking all this abuse at home. You had a choice. You don't have to take this abuse. Yeah. But she felt for Where she didn't see her options. You, yeah. had, a, you had to show her her option yeah. at that point, right? Because yeah, that's exactly it, right? And, and yeah. So you say, look, why don't you, why don't you just... Well, so what was your downside management plan? There wasn't any back Okay, then. but you just said there yeah. needs to be a downside there management that's, plan. But that, that's so age. So how does that make that's sense? Age. That's, that's, that's age. Oh, oh age. so you that's can hop around between the wise guy today yeah. and yeah. the guy who was... I want to know about that guy there who didn't have a downside management because that's a lot of people. Yeah, that's what I'm. I want to understand. So better. back then, the, uh -huh, the right. only back downside, then, right. the only downside management at the time was I better not lose my job. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I, I better not lose. And so you job. could have a pretty crappy situation at work, but you stick you because stick. you have a greater purpose. Yeah. Okay. And that was really the biggest reason I stayed in that yeah. job uh, for a period of time right before I left. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you couldn't screw up now. Because now you have this person who, Depends who's in med school. The last thing I want to do is screw that up so that she ruins her life, right? So you just sort of do it. You hate the job, you still do it, type of thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's your motivator to actually thrive in that same situation. Because, you know, you don't want to miss. You need downside management there too, right? So you, you can't well. just get by. Yeah, you, you, go, you have You to probably well. got motivated to crush it over there. Correct. I, I, I was pretty, I did well, right? Mm. And then uh, well enough, uh, so... So that's it, you know, and so a lot of that is, is just managing um, and figuring things out. I, call, I look back and say that's what I was doing, mm -hmm. but back then, no, it was still seat of your pants type of thing. There wasn't a lot of, forth there wasn't a lot of foresight and forethought. You know. So a lot of people sometimes where I find they're in that situation, and when they hear it, and, and you're proof of it actually, that's again why I love to hear your story, is because a lot of them feel like, I don't have a plan. I mm. need a plan. I gotta see all the steps between now to that light to the end point where I'm thriving. And if they don't see all of the steps laid out for them, they don't even take the first step. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you just said, you're flying out the seat of your pants, right? Like I would say the exact same thing. I've done that so many times till yeah. like up to last week yeah. actually. Yeah. And now <laughs> I haven't changed that. Kill you. Well, this is it. Yeah. So a lot of people get stuck at that point. And what I love about how Marco deals with it is exactly it. You don't even let the thought creep into your mind about looking that far. It, it, what do you call it? It's, um, Did you ever wonder about that? Like, what's that word? It's, um, a, better, a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and 
Okay, I like that. It's true though. Mm. You know, like how many times have because you've taken action? Yeah, because the thing is, once you've done the thing, it's a whole new set of variables now. Yeah. Now yes. your risk management changes. Yeah. Before it was like, oh, what if, what if, what if the you know her dad hates me? Oh, well, that's out the window. Who cares now? Yeah. <laughs> now, now, now that's, that's completely not yeah. a thing. Yeah. Right. That's com- now that's that thing that you're worried about doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, hates me already. Done. Now we move on. Now you have a whole new set of variables to work with. And that's really all it is. We're just managing these variables. Mm-hmm. It's true. But you weren't doing that then. That's no, my point. But it, it, but it worked out well. Yes. So I, I started off, you know, I was lucky enough to be, um, okay. I, I, did, I did a degree in zoology. Okay. Oh, wow. Utterly useless. Um, is it? I love animals. That's, yeah. that's about all I got out of it, right? And, and I'm waiting for that one time I'm in Jeopardy and I answer that one question. <laughs> but, make but, your million. Yeah, that's it. But you know what's happened? So I, I, my, zoology I, millionaire. Yeah, I got a millionaire. millionaire. I, I, so I got my first job. Like every science grad, I was a waiter, right? So I became a... <laughs> like every science grad. No, it's true. That. So I went out and I became a waiter. And I remember getting my first paycheck for like 50 bucks, whatever it was. And I walked into Royal Bank oh. on Dundas and Spadina. And I had a check of 200 bucks, whatever. Really. It was on St. Clair. Okay. No, no. Yeah. And I walked in. And as, as I was waiting in line, I picked up a brochure with RSPs and whatnot. And then I don't know what happened. I just left the line. I walked into the, general, the manager's office and I started selling RSPs and stuff. The guy was like okay, what do you want? I go, I'd like to work here. And then so he, he his name was Norman Sung. So I'll say the name because these are real things happen. <laughs> so Norman said, okay, well, give me a resume. So my resume had like, you know, University of Toronto and then Buffalo Jeans. So you're like 22, just coming out of yeah, the undergrad yeah. at this point. So okay. it was like, it was, there's nothing there of value except, you know, like Buffalo Jeans, all those shoes and some, I don't know, some food court thing. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then so he took it and he goes, you have nothing on here. <laughs> and, and I go, don't worry, it'll be good. And, and so he, he sent that up to a lady named Erica Chow at, at Royal Bank. And she goes, and I hear anything from them for weeks. And suddenly, her, yeah, you know, we could use people come on up and have an interview. And she goes, you have no finance degree. You have nothing. Yeah. And I said, I can learn I'm this. I'm a zoologist. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can learn this stuff. And so she gave me a chance and she said, okay, you work night shift. And so I'd work from 3 to 11, and I'd go home and I'd do all of my exams, like, you know, my trading stuff, my yeah. options, my derivatives, my whatever the heck, right? And I, I plowed through all that in, I think, six months, and I was licensed, and off you go, and that really started my career. But it started off by... Just following your gut. Yeah, yeah. well, because the only thing I could do is just say words, right? So yeah. I, I walked into the dude's office, and he was completely stunned. He was like, why, why are just you Just the here? confidence, right? Well, to do that. what's the downside? Yeah. They, f- they don't hire you. Yeah. And then I go back to the... They, you go back to the lineup. Tiger Lilies, which is the restaurant I worked at. Yeah. And it was awesome because it was right beside City TV. And then so what happens is all the City TV people would come in and, and they're like really, you know, attractive and whatever. And yeah. Oh, wow. And, and they, they, some of them tipped well. Some of them were terrible. Uh, <laughs> but, but I was right there. No names. Shout out to no City names. TV. No names. But, um, but Cynthia Mulligan tipped well. <laughs> I'm just saying. You just said no names. Okay, okay sorry. Fine. She tipped well. It was a positive thing. It's a positive one. Yeah, and so I so I was at Tiger Lilies. I'm not sure if it's still there anymore at restaurant. So yeah, that's so I walked. It was on Queen Street, and you walked mm-hmm. over to the Dundas and Spadina uh, Royal Bank. Yeah, that's how it all started. The weirdest thing, we're just doing stuff. And again, there was no downside to not doing it. What do you got to? There was yeah. no downside to not doing no, it. No, wait. How did that didn't come out right? There was no downside to doing it. Like there was none. There was no yeah. downside. Like the worst thing that could happen is okay. you'd be in the exact same position. You're exactly in the same spot. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. awesome. I can say names. I, it's awesome. That I can actually say normal. Were there stuff. times that you tried something and then it didn't work out for oh, the better? I would say eight times. Out okay. Of 10. Yeah. So, okay. Well, you just you never said that before. Yeah. Yeah. Because you made it sound like oh it just worked out. It just worked no, out. No. 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 Plenty of things. Good. It turned but out good. But you practice this. Yeah. So you wait. Did it's this. like eighty percent of times it doesn't work out. Most good. things don't work out. Yet you keep doing it. Yes. What? I don't know. Come that on. that's probably wiring, honestly. That might be some that's wiring. That's not wiring, man. That might be some some self teaching. But a lot of it is just what's the worst. So twenty percent of the times working out is great. If you, if you can return twenty percent of your investment every single time, you're you're doing well, right? And that's how I see it, right? And so I think the idea is um, there's almost <laughs> there's almost no downside to trying things. At all, I walked into your super place here, and hey, hey here we are. Now we're talking. Yeah, now, I could have. You, you could have said, "Hey, it's no event." All right, man, take it easy. Right. Right. I hung around. We talked. Right. There's almost no downside to doing. And thing. sometimes you don't know what these little conversations or little like 
movements will do. You don't know what comes of certain things, yeah. right? It's really interesting. It's neat. It's just, yeah. just that's the whole risk management side, right? Yeah. So if you, a lot of people I see right now, and I say this. Everyone's so scared to do anything. Well, here, I say this to my son, and it's exactly the same thing you said. They, the statistics show us that over 60% of high schoolers and college grads and, and young adults are, are terribly, crushingly lonely. Mm-hmm whether they are at school or here or wherever. So I said, that's good odds that someone's waiting for you to ask them something. Yeah. Hmm. It's good odds that you can walk up to some rando and say, hey, man, what's going on? How are you? And they would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. So I said to my son, so you're not the only one. You're on that side, the lonely side right now, but mm -hmm. you realize you're in good company if statistics are true. Yeah. And I think it is. They are very maybe, true. I think it's maybe more than six. Yeah. So a yeah. lot of people are That's there. just the ones that report it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 you know, for, for, for men in, in particular, dudes, they, they haven't heard a compliment in years. And I said, you know, why don't you be that true. old? There's a lot of bashing on guys going on, but that's, a, that's another I, thing. I, I agree. Yeah, that's right? Well, let's, we'll get back But, but they that. haven't heard a good thing about them in yeah. years, right? It's and true. only that it's a true. lot of men... That's so true. No one said anything about me in the longest time. And they're not, and they're not even encouraged, <laughs> I, think you're great, I find, awesome. to you think talk so to each other. Okay, thank nice you, Nice watch. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to. little bromance No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, you don't have to be sorry. No, you're talking. We're coping here. But you're right. You're you're right though because I remember um, just working in high schools. There's so many kids in need, and I try to like get these groups together so at least you know I could connect with a group of people once a week, and then they'd have each other in between when I'm not there. And the boys, when I meet with them individually, I'd be like, "Look at all these things you're great at," and exactly what you, they're saying. They're like, "I don't see this. No one ever says this to me," but. So we saw this need for all these young men who would individually say to myself or their guidance counselors or principal, whoever like saw the distress in them. And so we saw there was this need for a young men's group and they would be like, yeah, okay, I'm up for it. I could do that. And not, they never came. I even negotiated that they get community hours. Wow. I said, use it. And I said, you guys get, I'll buy you pizza. That's actually not, I, I brought cookies and stuff the school bought the pizza um they got the community hours to come so i said you have social currency to say hey man i'm just doing it for my community hours mm -hmm. right you know give an excuse mm -hmm. i just want the free lunch and they still wouldn't mm -hmm. come yeah. and so That's it's why a, is that it I, I i don't know i have theories i think one of the theories is being vulnerable yeah so Being that's another thing about the guys just, they don't want to... And like that whole boys don't cry nonsense or that they don't experience things. Like vulnerability, like we were saying with Nicole earlier today, vulnerability strength, right? Like, and, and I think just seeing with all these kids, there's that a real culture of, you know, you're a man, suck it up, walk mm. it off. Like don't say anything or... Or if you say something genuinely nice to someone, like, oh, why are you saying like that? Like, what are you doing? Or, you know. So I've taught my son this, and I do it all the time. Uh, and I, I have to prove it to him that it works. I said, you know, you, coming out and complimenting people seems weird. And I get yeah. it. Because that's, oh, weird, right? So I said, you know, ask them about a choice they made. You know, so ex for example, we were at uh, Il for, Il for mm -hmm. that's restaurant up there. And um, it was just a couple of weeks ago, more than a couple of weeks ago. Um, and a waiter was serving us, uh, and great guy. And I noticed that he was covering his tattoo. So I said, you know, as he was, as he was going through, and I said, hey, tell me the story about that tattoo. Dude just opened up. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he was so proud of it. You want to take the whole thing off and show everything. Yeah. Like, ah, cool. But the, <laughs> artwork. No, but, yeah. but the thing is, yeah. if you compliment or you ask people about why they did something, yeah. um, uh, they, you know, why did you choose that? Why did you that? And, and let them tell your story, uh, and you're sincere about it, you'll actually get them to open up completely. You know, you don't have to be weird and say, hey, that's nice. This, 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 you know, I asked them, you know, why'd you choose that? Mm -hmm. and, and they would tell their story. And it leads to all sorts of other things. Yeah. You know, because especially things like tattoos are very personal. So Brandon or yeah. my son just saw that. And I said, look, that's how easy it is to make someone's day. Yeah. Just ask them why they made that choice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to come across as creepy. It can just be a very, you know, like, yeah. you know, we had, um, you know, we we're renting out a place and we had a tenant come in. And he was very standoffish, and I walked in, and I, after he sort of settled in, I asked him about his shoes. I said, your shoes are the cleanest shoes I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, boom, 
open up completely because it's a sneakerhead. Apparently, <laughs> people care about these things like to it's that a degree. huge thing. They didn't with know shoes. that. It's a whole culture. Yeah, they didn't know that. Yeah, Did not yeah. know that. It's like it's glaringly Pristine. white. Yeah, right. And I was yeah. like, how much time do you spend on those shoes? Oh, he was off completely. Let his guard down and just talked and had a great old time. Right. And again, I, I do that to demonstrate to my son that it's not hard. Yeah. To, to just get to be observed. That. Just observe. observe. And, and, and observe and ask about people's choices because that's what people need to hear, that they made a good choice. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you say, you know, I have nice eyes, that, yeah, that comes across as weird. Mm -hmm. But if you say, hey, um, I, I love what you do with that jacket. It's a good combo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, and then people open up. Yeah. It works. It actually yeah. works. And if the, again, statistics are true, half the people you meet out there are just dying, dying. to tell you yeah. why they did that. Well, you see that not even just making eye contact with yeah. someone. Like if you just make mm -hmm. eye contact and smile, they're like, they're like, oh, hey, like, like yeah. I do that when I, I say hi to everyone, I go for a walk and they're like, oh my gosh, hi. They're like yeah. not anticipating someone to like say hi to them. We're very defensive. Yeah, yeah they're just bad. like, everyone's just well, in their zone. Well, especially closer than six feet nowadays. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Whole yeah. <laughs> I walk with my pole in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully that's done soon. Yeah, right. honestly. Uh, but but that's, that's just it. It's yeah. like a lot of times people get to these points and then they, we stop. Yeah. And uh, we, we don't take that next step. And what I just love about you constantly repeating it is not only do you take the step, you're like, yeah, what? No big deal. <laughs> There's no, no where's the like, risk. There's yeah. no like, risk. And the greater yeah. risk was actually staying where yeah. you were to you. And it's so, it's so obvious to you. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Well, you had cookies and coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? I like cookies and coffee. Uh, I know. Yeah. There's no downside here yeah. at all. It's all gains. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right? I'm here anyway. No, but it's yeah. true. I think, and I wish, you know, I say these things openly and I joke about it. I <laughs> wish that my son could see how easy it could be. Yeah. And, and not have to go through what I did, you know, being a jerk and, and it, you know, first being bullied mm -hmm. and then being a jerk to offset the Everybody, bullying. Yeah. And then sort of just keeping my space by, you know, by being this horrible little runt, um, I was able to sort of create the space and realizing and then taking that stupid behavior into the workplace as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. It did serve me. I don't know why. It shouldn't have. Um, and then... Not quite often it does. It and does, It reinforces though. it. It yeah. does. Isn't it? It's Isn't like, oh, look, this part, works. Though, it right? it, 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 you, per, you promote what you permit. Yeah. So they're like, there are two types of people to talk to on this point. Is one is a person trying to get somewhere who's stuck. But one is also the person who's also hiding under this persona of that oppressor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a... I bet you if statistics said anything, it would give you an interesting number. Or something the, that doesn't align with them, whatever right? it is. But yeah. that they keep with it. Yeah. The oppressors now I'm yeah. talking about. And, yeah. and they are oppressors because it reinforces that, look, um, it's promoted, it's permitted, it's my space, I'm safe here. And also get stuff from it. And yeah, they I'm get lucrative. Stuff, and there's, career, there's reward. Right? There's yeah. an upside. Yeah. There it is yeah. again. It's reinforcing. So the downside management on that is I feel like crap, but I can deal with that. I hope I can, you feel that crap because I did. Well, I think I wonder if a lot of people do. I think, hey, you know what? Well, I, I think I, they I do. Would, that. Well, you like, said I yourself. I think so because I think people are, you know, generally good. I think there's a genuine goodness in people. I really, I really believe that too. Yeah, and I think like we become <laughs> these being, characters. Well, right? you, you can't prove otherwise. I can't. You, I, you said you were that guy. Yeah, yeah. I, and I you would, felt terrible. Yeah, I would say for sure, right? I think there was a general universal you know, golden rule type of thing, right? Yeah. You want to treat as you're treated. And so, you know, oftentimes the, uh, I think people are generally apathetic, and, and if I could be honest, and yeah. then they're good to the people that they want to be good to. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the vast majority of, myself included, you know, I, I'll see horrible things, and, I, and I'll say, all right, a horrible thing happened. And I keep on moving on. Like, I, I, I'm very unlikely just... You don't internalize it. I don't. I don't. I think that might be the difference is you don't, yes. you have that, you might have that internal, like you might have that moment of internalization, but you filter through it so quickly. It's, it's you, it, so you've, you've nailed it. That's what the therapist said to me. He goes, do okay. you, do you not feel things? And I go, no, no, no. The truth is I feel it. I give it a ranking. Yeah. And then it's processed. Right. So that's what my son's struggling with. I said, not everything's a 10, man. Yeah. Like, you know, if you see emotion coming a mile away, you can assign that's probably a one. Yeah. Did it hit? Uh, it's a one. How am I going to respond if it's a one? Like this. Oh, yeah. there, there it goes. So, so the therapist would say to you, well, you got to feel it and get in there. I'm like, dude, it's already processed. It's done. Yeah. But I think to my son, that was very hurtful because he couldn't He doesn't there. have that doesn't skill have to that. digest it as or quickly as you Or just living long do. enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I think that, yeah. was, that was my mistake because I assumed, why can't you just do it? Just yeah. Do it. But he couldn't. 
And, and so I think it's a skill. I contributed to a lot yeah. of his anxiety as well. Because, look, look, this is how your dad does it. And he's like, now I can't do what my dad does either. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I feel doubly bad about myself. So I've learned. Yeah. I stopped doing that. Yeah. What do you do now? I, I take my time with it. Mm -hmm. uh, sunken, but, oh, that's your son, so it's not sunken cost. Yeah, no, this is not sunken to sunk cost. It's just how you process emotions, right? Yeah. I, you have to sit with it and, and chew on it. Some people, like, if they have to process it, they have to, and I think sometimes they don't always know Huh. where the emotion is coming from because it's so uncomfortable, right? So Oof. they get caught up in the overwhelming yeah. piece of it. And, um, you know, develop, there's a, like you said, there's a whole developmental perspective. I've become a reductionist too. in that sense. In yeah. That I can reduce it down to yeah. seeing the flow of neurochemicals. All right, that's what that is. I'm not going to yeah. give it too much effort. Um, it's all weight, right? We choose what mm -hmm. we give weight to, right? So here's an example of people feeling bad about stuff, right? Let's say I didn't like you. And I said a bunch of stuff to you in a language you didn't understand. You mm. just, no, no. I don't care what you said. And so that's how I, I see things, right? If I don't like to hear it, it literally becomes a language I don't understand. You mm. could swear to me in whatever language. I call it erasing. Sure. I do it. Yeah? Yeah. Totally. Awesome. It's like sound. That's why, because th that's why I like enjoy having conversation because when I would internalize it, yeah. I would take it like it meant everything. Yeah. Right? And then, I, and then I got to a point where I was like, why am I giving this so much weight? Yeah. Mm. And then... Usually, I guess I do that too. I mean, usually yeah. what happens in that situation is, uh, what is it? it? Like it goes the opposite way, but it gets extreme. Now you give nothing weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's okay. Start, well, start with nothing. So, so you see how it's, he says yeah. that? It, start it's, with nothing and then let it come back. Yeah. But yeah. then. Because oh, you're a constant. You're yeah. okay as the constant. mechanism. Everything else. Yeah. yeah. But then we're like, I, I'm, I'm thinking I've been through this exact thought. Yeah. And then I'm like. But that doesn't feel right either. <laughs> I don't, I'm just saying from my no, perspective. No, 100%, 100%. I'm like, if I have no emotion about stuff or don't care about how anybody feels, what do you think that's going to lead to one yeah. day? You know? And I'm like, I can't have that. So I, I'm trying to, trying to visualize. And I'm not talking about with family. I'm talking about Everything. just with humanity. Yeah. Because I love humanity, not yeah. just family. I, want, I love everybody. I want to love. Okay, I want to love everybody. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So, right? I want to get there. There's, there's and I thing. can't get there if I drop them so quickly. Yes. So I, now fair what? enough. So here's, 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 here's so I, this is how I see it. Yeah. And, and I think, um, is it how you said it, that everybody, we see everybody is good. Mm -hmm. so we all like to think that everybody starts off at a 10 and then you keep chipping away until, okay, that's where you are. Yeah. Whereas I start at the bottom. I mm -hmm. expect nothing. Yes. I don't have until any. Until you show me until, until No, no, in both, both yeah. ways. Yeah. In both ways. It's not yeah. just one way, right? So yeah. I sort of start at five <laughs> and, then, and then it becomes a six, it becomes a seven, and then we're talking. Mm -hmm. But I very rarely start off at a 10 mm -hmm. and say, this guy's awesome because it's almost never there. Right, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or when so I you, okay, I yeah. defer with you totally. Yeah. You know, I'm going to say that yeah, to yeah. You because I remember saying to him. Remember what I said? There was this teacher of mine who once said, "You all start with an A plus in my class. Yes, you need to choose to let the A plus go." And I remember you talk about sons. So we both talk about our sons and yeah. raising mm -hmm. their boys. And I remember having this exact thought in my head because I grew up not seeing good in people, or like I either wasn't looking for it or didn't believe it was there. And I said, I do. And, and, then, and then I said, I do not want my son to see the world the same way. Because I found out that when you do see the good in people, somehow you extract it from them. You know, you said it yourself, if you believe there's something around the corner, you'll tend to find yeah. something. Yeah. So I do that with people. You just said it yourself in another way with business. Correct. But mm -hmm. I do it with people. So I said, I'd love for my son to see a world where everybody was good. So because when you do that, it extracts the good out of them. So that's when I started doing with him. I was mm. like, I was like, give everybody a hundred percent, and I now do that consciously. I give it to them, and then not only do I do that. See, so you do the opposite. It, they both work, I guess, yeah. right? But you give them a, you test them on gaining ground. I start a new. I test them on losing ground. Yeah. So I give them opportunities, and I go, I wonder if they'll take this one. Like you know, will they steal five dollars? No. Okay. Will they steal ten? Will they steal a hundred? No. And then I get to a point, and someone will say, well, my God, you're putting all this stuff, you're risking all this. I'm like, yeah, but then I'll find the priceless this yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And I can go through thousands of people, but to find that priceless person, this is the only way to find them that mm -hmm. I know of. So, interesting it's <laughs> that like, you, you know, say that. Uh, you know, I was saying about, about is, it draws it all back to our kids again, right? So mm -hmm. my, my son's hurt because, you know, he's been sort of ostracized and all stuff's going on at work or at school, sorry. And I said, well, it's because you saw them here, but they only saw you here. Now, is it their mm. fault that they saw you there? 
you didn't tell them that you know you so that's the problem with mismatch man it, it, all sadness and unhappiness mm. comes from mis mismanagement of expectations it's yes 100 percent. i and that <laughs> i have that conversation all the time manage your expectations and you hear that and it doesn't matter the relationship neutral is good it's <laughs> yeah, or just, yeah, you choose it. <laughs> but it's some, like we create these stories in our head. That's what I just love right? about the we perspective. We create those stories in our head and it creates expectations. And it's like, do they know that you expect that of yes. them? Because maybe you need to have a conversation because they're, you know, disappointing you. Because that's what it comes out as, is disappointment or anger, displaced anger. And it's like, maybe you should communicate these expectations because... They're not realistic. And usually. then realign them, right? Like, yeah. You know, especially with kids and friends. And yeah. You, you, you might see them as your only friend, but that you're just one of many. Well, they're not going to treat you as a 10. Yeah. You're just, you know, a seven at, at best. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, but if you're the one who's walking around thinking this, it's not. You, you've built that up yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm big on the neutral. And it's not like prove it to me. There's nothing proved to me. I'm just sure. a random guy. Sure. I, yeah, I, I'm just here. I'm just yeah. here. You're not asking them to prove it to yeah, you either. Yeah, absolutely You're not. You're just like right? letting just, it go yeah. with the flow. Exactly. And then if it feels right, we talk more and here we are. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, I, I've met him for about three years now and we've been sort of, you know, arm's length about stuff. Right? And then one time I said, you know what? I'm going to ask him some advice. He has a kid. I have a kid. Mm. And that's how you start, right? Mm. Yeah. But if I just, boom, day one, no, hook me up. It's, it won't, I don't do that. Right? Yeah. And, and I'm, it's not like I'm... Um, you know, not skittish. I, no, I just, but it's a acclimation yeah. period. Yeah. So you start neutral, right? In yeah. the five, and then you. I get there in five minutes with someone. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> You're a good guy. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know You're about that. I don't good. know about that, but you know what? What's interesting is why this is helpful. This is so helpful to two types of people, I think. Yeah. One is the type who is, and I didn't even see this coming to uh, like until the middle of our conversation here. I thought we could talk about how people who get stuck you know, um, can at least figure out, here are reasons why you move, mm -hmm. right? For how you move, yeah. yeah. And why and how you move, right? And here's like some great logic to it. It's so simple to understand and it's undeniable. I love that. Well, it seems to work, at least for me. Well, and <laughs> only 20% of the times according to yeah. me, but it's still <laughs> worth it. That's highly successful. But it's still worth it, yeah. right? And that's the other thing that came out of it for me was that to, for people to understand that it's not even going to work every single time. Like yeah. it, it doesn't mean it's going to get better every single time. But 20%, like you just said, it's a 20% return. If you gave me a 20% yeah. return on my money, I'd be, I'd be like, thank you. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense. And the point is, is if you didn't try, you'd get 0% yeah. anyway, yeah. right? And then to the other side of the spectrum, which is um, the part I'm actually most curious about because you know, those, um, the, the oppressor, I never even saw that. In, I never saw that in you, ever, not once. I hope that, I hope that guy's dead, honestly. Like no, I, but like, like you, you know purposes. that person well. Mm -hmm. And you could, so you for that reason, that knowledge. so you can yeah. help that person is what I'm trying to say. Because yeah. I think oppressors actually, let's call them that, are trying to get out. I really believe that they would want to. I think that they're there because they don't feel that they have another choice. Just like the person who gets stuck depressed, mm -hmm. I think that there's a, the person gets stuck being the oppressor because that's all they know. And they look at the, the, the chance that if they take to go the other way, look at all they stand to lose. Yep. What do you say to them? You have to be vulnerable to do that too. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. you said your leverage on that was the birth of your child. So it was mm -hmm. something else that they had to care for so deeply that they figured would, um, would be a point where they'd have to be like, I gotta break the cycle somewhere. But they don't do it necessarily with themselves first. That's what I find like you that, have, a, you have the ability. Words. I said those words specifically to my wife. Mm -hmm. I got to break this cycle. I got to stop. Like, you know. When he was born, your son was yeah. born. Yeah. Like, but, you but knew it, this about yourself. But even then. And then like, you made a change. And I, and, I, and I have all the gratitude in the world for, for my parents who raised me. But that part wasn't easy. It wasn't all great. Mm -hmm. But I still said, you know what? It is what it is. You know, it's moved on. You can't go back type of thing. And, and then you, you sort of look forward. Um, and that cycle had to stop. You yeah. Know, I, you know, my entire life, I've rarely raised my voice. I definitely never raised a hand. That's just, I can't do it. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but as you're just saying, man, it's all choices. Like, you know, a lot of, a lot of times, I think the previous generation couldn't make those choices because they felt the, the, the weight of tradition and culture and whatever mm -hmm. on them that you have to do certain things a certain way. It's terrible, but I, I am the least traditional, culturally inclined person. I am just whatever. 
I'll take on bits and pieces of everybody else, and then that's my culture now. Mm -hmm. I am as Canadian. Well, you got your own comes. identity. I am as Canadian as it comes. Like mm -hmm. you know, I, I like some parts of my you know Asian East Asian heritage. I lo love what I am as a Canadian, mm -hmm. but nothing really defines me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't do one thing or the other because I'm supposed to. You, you just find joy. You define you. Yeah, yeah, and it's you easy. That you. Way. I love yeah. that. It, it, but the. There is no downside to that. There really isn't. <laughs> so just don't, okay, so these people don't like you because of that way. Don't freaking go there then. Yeah. Because you know you'll find somebody else. And that's the idea of abundance, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if people don't like you for who you are and you need to change it. So how did you change it when your son was born? What was, yeah. like, what did you, what was your actionable move when you, so you the first decision that? Was, the first decision was, this is it. I live for me. Every decision is for the three of us. Okay. Um, which meant that in-laws, parents, yeah, I'll listen to your stuff, but it's not going to affect anything I do. You, this is your core. This is yeah. my core, right? And um, mm. pissed off a lot of people. Eloping was the first one. But, Sorry, uh, who was? Uh, eloping was, was oh, one of them, Oh, yeah, right? yeah, for sure. That's but, a huge but, family thing. But if you choose you know, your spouse first or you choose your family first, you really can't go wrong. You really can't, because if you listen to everybody else I've spoken to, oh, i got to be here and here and here and here and here. Uh, well, you don't have to be here, here and here. You can just not go. Yeah. And then you'll find out that the repercussions are never as bad as you think yes. they are. Yes. You, in your head, you think, yeah. oh, no. Because so you have all these attachments to things. But then you yeah. turn out that, um, you know, if you're not... If you're not a jerk about the whole thing, and you're just like, yeah, I don't feel like going today, because yeah. why? You don't need any excuse. Just don't want to go. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. And then and then and uh, and you realize that you um, don't even need an excuse. You don't. I you love know how many it. times people? I, I, I have actually, loved, you I chronic. It. I learned that later in you life. You don't even have to later. give them a reason. You say, yeah. I don't want to go. I just don't feel it, yo. No, chronic illness gave me that gift because yeah. I used to be such a people pleaser. My yeah. yes. I would like never stop. I'd be running around yes. ragged. Yes. And when I got sick. You know, I had to start saying no because I was I was sick. Then as I got better, I'm like, mm. people stop asking me if I was sick or not. I just like, no, I can't go. They're like, okay. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. Yes, <laughs> this oh, is so amazing. No, nothing's better than the cancel it's, plan. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like, really? You're not feeling it? All right, cool. I'm done. <laughs> uh, I'm an introvert yeah. by nature. Yeah, right? yeah. And I turn this I turn this on when I need to. Yeah. But um, I, I, yeah, I hear you. It's true. So I agree. All of us are call the right? situation. I need to sit extrovert. and be quiet. Yeah. 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 Situation. So the whole family. I call it high maintenance because I need yeah. time to myself. Yeah. 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 I just play video games. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I have no other excuse. Yeah. And then, but but the reality is that you you think that if you say no to you know family and whatnot, there's going to be all these. There really isn't. Yeah. Right. And if and if they're holding that over you, then they're not your people. Yes. They're not your people. Choose those who choose you, right? Yeah. And, and if, if they're like, you're holding Why like... Why did I go and say that? To yeah, guys? yeah. If you have like all these conditions to your right. uh, affection... I agree yeah. 100%. Dude. No, it needs to be unconditional. Yeah. So, and you find that the people who stay will stay and the people yeah. who go will go. So, I have a handful of friends from, university, or from high school that are still my friends mm -hmm. that still call me every other day and they yeah. text me or whatever. And that's 40 years. Yeah. Or 30 years there, yeah. I just have a question. I don't know if you feel comfortable asking, but the people that were reaching out from the Facebook messages, mm. how did those conversations go? Or was there a conversation? Yes. I or? apologize profusely. And was this via email or was by, it like you know, a... I try, well, they're not going to give me their number or anything. Yeah, like yeah for real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, that, that's let pretty me let vulnerable. You back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, they found me on, Fair on there and yeah. it came out harsh and I showed my wife, oh, this is what I've done. I feel terrible about it. Yeah. And so, you know, I said, you know, it's, well, it generally comes from a place of insecurity yeah. uh, and, you know, all those things we talked about. And mm -hmm. I apologize. And I, I'm so sorry. I know I can't change it. Yeah. Just know that um, I'm not that person anymore. Uh, it was a horrible person. And, um, and I, again, sincerely sorry that I've done this to you. And that's all you could do. And, and sometimes... Did they, did, was that received? Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it depends where they are. On the their fact own. that they say it's plural, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, but no, it's true. They. They. <laughs> so yeah. some of them said. Um, There's a Facebook group. No. I'm just yeah. <laughs> some of them said, um, OK, fine, whatever. Let's move on. Bygone. And some of them just left it at that, you know, left on red. Right, yeah. Everything, right? right. And they, 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 they just needed to let you know yes. how they felt. And I'm more than happy. And I actually did one of those massive. This is back when. Just here, I'm apologizing on mass Generally. to everybody. I've just I've like as a post, pissed everybody off. And if you know anybody, I pissed off. Please forward to their attention. People actually did take me. I up think on this that is offer. a good manual for oppressors. Eh? Like, mm. by the way, this is a great way to deal with. Well, it. it's restorative, right? You know what the worst part of it is that when people got angry at me and came back out and said, "Hey, 
it wasn't even for reasons I thought. Like, what? Really? I did that too? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, no, wow. seriously. Oh so it's gosh. all of the... Um, yeah. It's perception. It's the perce- you, you think you did a thing, and you're like, I don't know what I did to this person, but I must have done something. Right. And, um, you know, it might not be the primary person. It might be somebody Attached secondary. To yeah. yeah. Didn't know. Did not know. So That's that ripple effect, yes. right? We're all connected, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I had folks who, a handful of folks who said, yeah, this, this didn't happen. I said, I had no idea I did that. But I do apologize if I did. Yeah. So it doesn't really clear your conscience. You still live with this, right? And you feel bad about it. Yeah. But, but it's, you, you have to own it. That's the thing. That's the difference. Is I think when you own something and you can take responsibility, you carry, you carry it in a different way, right? It becomes the, um, you, you, um, is it, it takes one to know one. Yeah. And then so what happens is that you, you become mm. good at spotting it. And then also you become mm. good at telling your son what's coming. Um, you know, one of the, the most basic thing I say to him is that, you know, just watch out for that Skinner box. You know the Skinner box? The, the loot box? So, you know, when people, they'll, they'll give you, they'll, they'll treat you like crap five oh, times. Oh, Skinner like psychology? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They'll, give, they'll treat you like crap five times and the sixth time they give you a good, good outcome. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I'll just wait for a sixth time then. Yeah. Like, you don't have to live like that. You don't, you don't have to be in a relationship where you're treated poorly most of the time. And yeah. Once in a while you get a, a good a treatment. Good, beautiful I like that. Reward. That is not normal. That's how yeah. you get gamblers addicted. And that's exactly what happens to kids, mm-hmm. where, where you have kids... The cycle that, of abuse is just yes. like that, right? So, Honeymoon period. And exactly. Then, yeah. They do that. So you yeah. like, if I keep on pulling this, this slot machine, maybe this would be a good outcome. Mm-hmm. And I can see it with my kid. Mm-hmm. And it killed me. I said, and I, what can I say? Right? He's going through it. Mm-hmm. And you can see friends who are treating him horribly for, you know, eight percent of the time. And once in a while, they throw him a bone. Mm-hmm. He goes, no, let's see it. They're my friends. No, they're not. This mm. is this is yeah. actual abuse. You're just abuse. clinging to yes, that, that. This is one. abuse, and you see that in relationships with friends and mm-hmm. spouses, whatever. And, and it's like you know, it's usually bad, but you, you you hang around for the good one. Yeah, that's not a good relationship. And if you can spot that, you're out. Yo, yeah. see ya. And it's really just yeah, it's not gonna work. Bye. You got to choose yourself. Yeah, and you see it all the time. You see it all the time. That's the easiest way to manipulate a kid, is that you 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 randomly give them good. Uh, outcomes, mm. but most of the time it's bad. So they'll sit through the bad to get to the good, and that's a terrible way to treat yeah. people. But yeah, it's true. You can see yeah. it. That's another reason people get stuck too, because they figure if I stick around long enough, and it'll children get are better. so loving, they do that just because yes. they just and want they're forgiving. And they, Even they, not yeah, kids. so Even forgiving. Even not kids, like others. Yeah. generally, they're like, I'll yeah. wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. Yeah, and there it is. I got it. I yes. got a good one. Look, they are good people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you were saying before, people holding on to that one piece of good. Yeah. Sometimes you make it up in your head. Hundred percent. And even yeah. if it's not, even if it's not there, huh? You know, you see the good, but it's not actually there. It's like this hidden good. Sometimes people see, and it, like you said, it's that fallacy or yeah. that thing that they create in their head. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's not to belittle or, or speak lightly of abusive relationships, but it's like, you know, if it's bad things are happening most of the week. And you have that one or two times where they, hey, no, it's all good now. That's mm-hmm. not good. Mm-hmm. That's not good. That that's literally you're playing roulette with people. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe this one will be good. Yeah. That's not a good way. And if you spot that, and I tell my son, if you spot that, you gotta pull out. You gotta just, yeah, pull to shoot, man. Um, he doesn't get it because he's young and yeah. he, he needs to go through it. Unfortunately, he's gone through it now. Now he can actually go back and holy smokes, you know, four times out of five, it's been negative comments about me my looks my appearance well that's the thing he starts to look you have to look at your situation without you yes. in it you have to kind of step back and that's, pull yourself back and true. look above and be like okay what's the dynamic the forest here and the tree thing and that's what yeah. it is now because Th- speaking in the third person yes, helps it's that huge. too sometimes because a lot before when he was just going through this he's looking for the phone so he's already going to contact me, didn't call me. And you can see that. All oh, that anxiety yeah, and anticipation. And he's already got anxiety. He's already got depression. So he's lo- looking for that, looking for that. And now that he stopped expecting it, he can now realize, hey, this is I'm terrible. I'm fulfilled, yeah. yeah. This is terrible how they treated me before. Yeah. You know, that I had to, uh, you know, I was never important enough, you know. And, and I said, no. Then I said, you know, to be fair, you could be a handful too. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, right? It doesn't work one way right yeah you know, you know it takes two right and so let's sit back um and like i said to you before last week we'll talk is that just make sure now that you've gone through this don't make anybody else feel the same way yeah yeah so i'm glad he's going through it in some sense 
So it's really at the end of the day, he's getting he's getting his power now. He's getting his uh, his owning his. I hope so. Yeah, uh, it looks so. like it. Um, yeah. I hope so. It's not like an overnight thing either. It's Took like a, a it's a well, like uh, like most things with people, we're we're not like robots. You just click it and turn on a switch, right? Yeah. There's, and and we go through um, like what is it called? Like we fall off the wagon sometimes mm. too, and then we got to come back. We hear that repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, man, thank you for, for walking us through this, like, this philosophy. I think it's a philosophy. I'm it's just a, a random guy, man. I don't... Yeah, you see this. <laughs> you, see what, you see what I mean? Like, yeah. This philosophy on, you know, it's, it's about managing that downside. And he's yeah. like, hey, come on. Look and at just where you attaching are now. yourself and look your worth the and to the outcomes of things. I think that's really important, too, right? Yeah. Like, right? You're guaranteed the Your effort, worth is always constant. But you're constant. not guaranteed the result. And that's right. a huge thing, too. We all think that it's a linear relationship. Yeah. If I do this much work, I'll get that result. No. Just enjoy the effort. Yeah. The result may or may not come. And yeah. if you only attach yourself to that result, and I think we're talking about other things in our kids and expectations about school and everything, it's a very dangerous thing to say, I'll only be happy if I get it. Right. Mm. Oh, man. Yes. That's that, just setting yourself up for failure. It's just sometimes yeah. it's odds. Yeah. Sometimes it's nothing to do with your ability. No. Right. You know, like if they can take well, using just random yeah, things. Yeah, like what's wrong with me, yeah. right? But here's the thing. If they, if they only take 100 things and you're the 101st, there's nothing wrong with you. It mm -hmm. was an arbitrary cutoff. Yeah. And I think, so with my kid, I, I say, look, just enjoy the effort. Um, and, and, and what did you learn from that? And, yeah. and, and um, if, if a good result comes out of this, wonderful. But don't don't hang your happiness on the result because it may not come. Yeah. You know, whatever for everything. You know, we could try our best in our business and do everything we think is right. It may not come. It's like, um, uh, well, stocks is easy. You know, it's uh, it steps <laughs> up, elevator down. Yeah. Happens all the time. <laughs> they go ming ming right? Yeah, and, yeah. and but that is everything. Like you know, like our, my business cut in half, sixty percent. Pandemic hit. You know, it went from like forty people that trimmed it down to sixteen. Wow. That that hurts. That hurts. Right? But you just, you know, the mistake is expecting can continue. Right. Mm. What I should have assumed is, yeah, this could happen you, at any time. I remember him saying, don't wait for the knockout punch. Yes, that's you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? Like if you hang around long yes. enough, that's what you're setting yourself that's, up for. Uh, uh, you Without changing so you got to, yeah, you better yeah. move before the adapt. knockout punch. Yeah. I love that because that... If you don't move because you're deking, you're deking, and you don't it's move like, because yeah. of the happiness, you'll move because of the fear of staying here. Yeah, or the that knock for that knock up punch. Yeah, because it comes. It absolutely comes. And the best example is using stocks as an analogy. Yeah. People buy a, a thing, mm -hmm. and they just believe in the thing. And I'm like, dude, it's just a ticker. <laughs> yeah, it's literally just a number on a screen. You know, why write it to zero? Yeah, they attach why so much it to, to it. Just take the twenty percent you got left and do something else with it. Like yeah. you don't have to write it to zero. Just it's always about where is the next dollar coming from. Mm -hmm. so it might not be that stock. It could be a different stock. So take that dollar amount, put it somewhere else, and go up. Mm -hmm. But I think people, they, the problem is people, they, they make a decision. They try to defend that decision. Yeah. The same way cults work. Mm -hmm. You know, the same way things work where they, don't, they feel stupid for making that decision. Mm -hmm. So they double down. Yeah, just a, so they double yeah. Down. They do. You think about they it. It's do, so though. true. It's true. Yeah, you, 100%. We've seen that a lot of ways. You buy yeah. a thing, you yeah. join a... Whatever it's the devil I know, right? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. They double that. down, and, and it's more it's more embarrassing for them that they oh shoot, you know I, I you can't admit you're wrong. Yes, you... I'll just double down. Yeah, no man. Yeah, man, it's a bad mistake. <laughs> yeah, move, and then just and it's in a dime. So I heard of, I heard yeah. this. Apologize if you must, and then drop it. Yeah, yeah. that's how I remember that thing I forwarded. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's yeah. one of the what's that thing? Uh, like yeah, the other the other one would be you know if um, I can pick up the pieces. Or I'm going to just leave my fuck there and walk away. <laughs> it's true. Like, why do you have to pick up the pieces? Yeah. Is there any pieces you want, <laughs> yes, first of all? Yes, right? Just do you want any of these pieces? Smash the bits, all right, yeah. whatever. Boop. Move on, right? I mean, I think far too many of us are trying to pick up the pieces and glue it back together and then somehow expect it to be the same. Yeah. Nah, just, move on. No, sometimes there's not good pieces. <laughs> So funny. But you see how that, that can at least get to me. I think it's a great survivor's handbook yeah. on getting through some of these things because the alternative is people get stuck. Yeah. And and they they want to see like this this like again this whole promise of something on the other side. And he doesn't he doesn't worry about that. He just you you go. You gotta mm -hmm. go and you gotta go now. You have thirty seconds to decide this. I wonder if like some And it's very decisions. much in the present. That's, a, that's not a small decision. But you it can wasn't. get, but you can get. It somebody. was a YOLO. <laughs> yeah, but you can get somebody to make a decision like that, 
Sometimes we don't make that decisions for ourselves. It takes somebody else, yeah. you know, but we got to be that person for yeah. ourselves to go, look, you got 30 seconds to decide this. Yeah. And but I boom, think part of that too is, is like you said, I don't think that. about the past, the past of the past. You said that earlier, mm. something to that effect, but you're also not worrying about the future. Yeah. Right. And I think that's part of it too. Cause when you think about the past, you invite depression. When you think about the future, you can create anxiety. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you're, when you're, you're, being really neutral. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's what we're very present. Right? I would say Whichever. one thing, uh, sort of, sort of wrapping it up, is is the idea that we often overestimate bad things. Hundred percent. We're that defaulted we, that we way. Just, we just catastrophize so catastrophize. badly. Catastrophize. Yeah, and that's we're like, the word. Yeah, we're like, oh, if I do this all the no, maybe none of that's gonna happen. Yeah. And um, and that's what I mean. Like, I think a lot of us just make that mistake that yeah. if we don't do this, all these bad things will happen. This person won't. Yeah, it's like we're me. all hardwired yes. to like see risk. That's that's who but we are. But not yeah. That's who we are, right? Yeah. So I think the idea is that yeah, there is risk there. But are you sure you've assessed it? You, are you sure you're right? Balance because it's still a guess. At the end yeah. of the day, it's still best guesses, right? So. Um, so I just assume that the upside is always more, and that's my trading bracket, right? Negative three plus nine. I, I have a negative three downside in my trades. Once I hit negative three, I, I sell no matter what. But I let my winners ride 9% and I sell at that point either as well. So I always make three times as much as I lose. So negative three to nine. I got my, my kid wants to do this, so I got to learn about this now. So. Yeah, negative three to nine. <laughs> it's, right. it's different now because the markets are insane. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're the, flicking the 50% in a day. Like crazy. Right. Really? Oh gosh. But, recent, but you can just pick a new bracket, right? As yeah. long as the downside is you know, 3x less than your upside, then that's risk management, right? Um, and, and stick by those rules. And they can't change rules every single time. No. Yeah. <laughs> not or, every single time. Or it's not a rule. <laughs> or it's <laughs> not a rule. <laughs> it's just an opinion for the day. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? So, yeah. But it's true, I, I swear, to, I, 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 you know, the, I think people f far overestimate downside. Really do. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what he does. doesn't do. He, he doesn't over. I'm ignorant. The downside. It's far better to be ignorant. Bliss. Is that what you yes. Ignorance is something. Ignorance is bliss. bliss. Yeah. Right, you know. um, I don't think you're ignorant. I'm pretty ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty ignorant. Says the most non ignorant person ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I think you 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 take a look at your your circumstance, your experience. You really are to me an example of how to take a situation and like at that moment like detach from it. You call it being neutral. And your ability to detach from that moment, like it's, um, it's, it's like the basis for your strength because it, it prevents you from staying in that spot. Mm -hmm. it, it enables you to move. Um, it's the same thing. Now I'm trying to think because I was going to ask you as a last word. I mean, we're here to talk to people and hopefully show this to people who are trying to make a change, right? Mm -hmm. Or who are stuck somewhere. My, my presumption was always that they're stuck. In, an, in a depressed or an oppressed position. No. I didn't think about the oppressor's position until right now. And I was like, people are also stuck there. And, you know, for them to detach from all of that thing that keeps them in that oppressive role, what, do, what what's your final word to them? Give them encouragement. What do you say? Well, I think... From one oppressor to the other. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it, I mean I, again, the, the main thing is understand that that comes from somewhere. Like, I don't, you know, meaning that whatever you're acting out, it, it's a, some uh, accumulation of all your experiences in the past. And you feel that this is the best way forward. Uh, looking back, I would say, yeah, no, it was stupid. You didn't, you didn't have to be. That wasn't the only way forward. Sure, but now you're here. So now what? What do you mean? What, like to the, to the person who's there, right? They didn't have to, yeah. but they chose and here they are. Yeah. Now what do they do? This? Yeah. Well, I think that the main thing is that it's moment to moment. You don't, you don't have to be, I, I, really, if you're talking about, do I have to be this person? Mm. The answer is no. Okay. You could Make simply choose the next thing you do, the next dollar you make, whatever the heck it is, you know, you, you, you've invested in this personality. You feel that it's gotten you this, this way. You can stop. Like you just, you can literally stop in a dime, but most people are afraid because they're far more worried about being consistent. They want to be who I am that I presented to you. Um, that's why oftentimes when people... And the comfort of that. Yes, because yes. they feel, okay, they're going to know who I am. Yeah. But I think the problem is that people are so worried about being consistent uh, that it, 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 bog, it bogs them down. That's why people, when they have getting really bad spots or they've been in, whatever they've been in, they move. 
So they don't have to put on new shows somewhere else. They don't have to be that same person anymore. Mm -hmm. Most of us just act in a way because we want to stay consistent with the way we've been. But people find, you know. Because that's the expectation. Yeah, taking the kids out of school mm -hmm. uh, is a good way. You know, uh, you know, if you're in a bad situation in this part of town, this community, just leave that community mm -hmm. and go somewhere else. You can be a different person. But I think a lot of people, they, they're far more worried about being inconsistent. And for some reason, that holds them back. They say, oh, I can't, I can't possibly suddenly go out and be super social because people don't see me as that. I'm, I'm embarrassed. Or they can't possibly not see me as this power type A guy. Because mm. mm -hmm. um, that's all. Yes, you can. No mm. one gives a shit. <laughs> like, it's truly, nobody actually cares. Mm -hmm. And people generally adapt pretty quickly. Oh, okay, so, all right. Oh. There's a change. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a problem. People think that I have to keep on acting this way. Because this is what people have always known. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're humans. We like to categorize things. Right? That's our default, right? This is friend or foe, threat or not threat. And so and people automatically have the assumption, as I did, that if you're not a threat, you must be prey. It's not true. Mm -hmm. So to your point, how do you get out of this? It's, it's really a choice. Your, your next thing you say to somebody doesn't have to be cruel. Yeah. You know, the next thing you say to somebody could be very positive. Uh, you know, you have an employee that you're used to. Some bosses pound on employees. Yeah. You don't have to. You know, the, the next word you say to your kid doesn't have to be cruel. doesn't have to be passive aggressive. You choose. And you, but I just said, just stop for a moment, right? That's it. That's really it is. And then it just becomes a habit of not being a, a jerk. Yeah. Almost said something else. <laughs> habit of not being a jerk. It is a habit. It's, it's a habit. You can make it a habit to not be a jerk. It is. Mm -hmm. It is a habit. As much as you can make it a habit to be one, to be right? It is. Well, that's yeah. it. it is a habit. Mm -hmm. It is a habit. And then, the, mm -hmm. so I, I would say that. You know, because it was a conscious choice for me to, I can't be this way anymore. I just can't. It sucks. Mm -hmm. Right? Because then you're always like, all right, who did I piss off now? <laughs> um, and and then, right. you're, then you're playing it through your head. So I'd rather just not have those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, man. Hey, man. I really appreciate that. Again, just some random guy here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep saying that. <laughs> it's uh, like I'm not. Yeah, yeah. We're all just random people. Yeah, yeah. It's true. There's, everybody. I've done nothing. We're all random people. Yeah.